In order for you to understand why dog hair mats, you must first learn the science behind dog hair itself. I'm Amy Lee. I am a certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am also a content creator on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer, and on that channel, I bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry, one that includes pet owners as a valuable consumer. By sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry on my YouTube channel, it allows me to give pet owners the opportunity to provide quality care for their beloved pets at home, increasing value to their pets' lives, as well as increasing the bond they share with their pet. It's pretty awesome. Rehydrate the coat and seal the hair follicle through the conditioning process, or you are causing your dog's coat to mat. If you don't do this, it's gonna mat quicker. The only way to never demat your dog again, is this is how you're gonna prevent it. The info shared in this video will become essential to maintaining your pets at home. Or if you're a pet groomer, the information that we're sharing here is essential to you in order to keep the pets that you groom in the best condition possible between grooming appointments. As I put this content together, I realized the information that I share often you would only find during a paid seminar, a paid external learning program. I bring it all here to you and your pets because you need this information. You want this information. You just didn't know where to get it and it really wasn't available to you like it is right here on Go Groomer. The information that you're learning about pet grooming techniques, methods, products, tools, quality industry information. Even if you're only maintaining your dogs between grooming appointments and you have a professional groomer, which most of you do, this is valuable information. This topic, I have to cover it the right way. In order for you to understand why dog hair mats, you must first learn the science behind dog hair itself. On the top right, you'll see two hair follicles that are nice and straight, and then you'll see two hair follicles that kind of look like the feather duster on the left side of the page. The feather duster is a tool that we use to clean our house. It's designed to trap dirt. I want you to take a look at that cuticle on the far right. That is a cuticle of a dog's hair that is not properly maintained. When the coat is stripped of all its natural oils, it lacks hydration. Hydration is moisture and it will tend to mat very quickly, even if you brush often. When the coat is stripped of all its natural oils, that's through shampooing, guys. Shampooing starts a clean slate, removing old oil and sebum from our dog's coat. Sebum is what the oil is called that our dog's skin and hair follicles naturally produce in order to protect the skin and hair. If it lacks hydration, like the picture we're looking at in the top right corner, under a microscope, that's what the hair looks like. And it doesn't matter how much you brush, even if you brush often, that hair is open and ready to receive all kinds of dirt and grime. It's also losing its natural oils which is what seals the cuticle. Take a look at the hair that's nice and smooth. That's what your dog's hair should look like. Now I realize you can't see this when you look at your dog. That's why I'm showing you this example. We want our dog's hair cuticle to be sealed. All the moisture, the good stuff is sealed in your dog's hair cuticle. And when we bathe our dogs, we remove a lot of the sebum and that's okay. Shampooing will remove dirt and grime from the coat, but it also will remove your dog's natural oils, rehydrate the coat and seal the hair follicle through the conditioning process, or you are causing your dog's coat to mat. If you don't do this, it's gonna mat quicker. The only way to never demat your dog again, is this is how you're gonna prevent it. The info shared in this video will become essential to maintaining your pets at home. Or if you're a pet groomer, the information that we're sharing here tonight is essential to you in order to keep the pets that you groom in the best condition possible between grooming appointments. Your groomer is gonna make a suggestion of the schedule that you should follow in order to keep your dog in good shape, skin and coat. Most of the time that's between, anywhere between four to eight weeks. And you should listen to what they're saying because they hear you saying you want a mat free dog but you also don't want him shaved. So this is what has to be done. If you can't do the work yourself at home, that's okay. 
guess what? I have a solution for you. Your groomer should be talking to you, and if they're not, if you're a groomer, you need to be talking to your clients and saying, I hear you. I hear you want your doodle's coat to be about an inch and a half in length and in a lot of areas on, on the dog. This is what we have to do in order for that to happen. I give the dog a good bath and condition. I send him back home. Your dog's skin cycle is a 21 day process. So in 21 days, we've got a lot of old exfoliated skin and old sebum oils in the coat that needs replenished. So in three to four weeks, you need to have your dog scheduled with your groomer for a bath condition brush out and blow dry. If you want to keep your big bouncy beautiful dog that has beautiful coat and I'm talking even a, a Saint Bernard, we don't clip a Saint Bernard, but that coat needs to be handled the same way as we're talking tonight. Say your grooming schedule is every eight weeks for some of your dogs and that's pushing it as far as you can, then make sure when you check out and you pay for your dog, come pick him up from the groomer, you schedule a session in three weeks for your groomer to bathe, condition, brush, and dry your dog. And you won't have mats. If you can do it yourself, which I'm gonna show you a demo, how to do it right and why it's important, then do it yourself. But the point is, you gotta do it. You just got to. You can't wash your hair and not condition it and expect to get a comb through it when you get out of the shower. Conditioning is one of the biggest secrets to keeping your dog mat free. Following up the bathing process should always be followed up with a, a good conditioner, not one that's gonna weigh down the coat. Now you are gonna hear me talking about some products. For the first time, you're gonna hear me talking about some of the Yves San Bernard products that I have been acquainted with through my pet esthetician course that I'm taking through Yves San Bernard. I have been really wowed by the products, definitely high end, quality wise and price. So I don't want you to take away from this video, this demo, you have to go and buy Yves Saint Bernard products. If you can, if you can afford it, you should. I actually am with a breeder in this demo tonight and we are washing one of her dogs. It is a toy schnauzer, a little black phantom toy schnauzer named Grace. And she takes very good care of all of her dogs. But she was wowed by the information that we were sharing together that day too. If you, you don't know what you don't know and it's not your fault, but that's why we, we do what we do right here, is so you do know. And I'm here to help you and your pets. Before I show it, I want to remind you that we have a sit time for all products that we use when we bathe and condition our dog. Anytime I shampoo a dog, I at least allow it to sit on the coat for about four minutes minimum. That's not a problem, because I start washing here, by the time I get down to, to the back legs, then I start massaging the product through the coat. And by the time I'm done, so the dog's getting a little massage, which is nice. By the time I'm done massaging the product again through the coat, now it's time to thoroughly rinse the shampoo and get ready for the condition process. And the condition process is the magic. It really is. You can't skip it. That's what really keeps your dog from matting. And the conditioner needs to sit on the coat as well for about five minutes. Let me throw this demo on there so you can understand what this crazy lady in the little box is trying to explain to you. Are you ready to learn? We're gonna be using our Prima bathing system today. So we have it all ready to go. We're using the Tropiclean Hypoallergenic Puppy Shampoo. And yes, Grace is not a puppy, but it's a very gentle shampoo. It's not gonna strip all her natural oils and that's why we're choosing it. And it cleans very well too, so. I do need to let the shampoo sit on there a couple minutes. You want your water lukewarm, never hot and never cold. Lukewarm. We want our shampoo to sit on them for about four or five minutes. Just to kind of bake off the dirt and grime and then we'll rinse it off. Feel that. Yes, it it's, so it's like It is, it's, it's, it's amazing. It truly is. You're massaging them a lot. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that you're moving over parts multiple times just to ensure that this um, soap and the lather has gotten deeply into the coat. Yeah, and through it. So I see you going along the way the, the hairline grows mm -hmm. on her with it mm -hmm. and pushing it in. Pushing it down through the coat. And it also helps a coat, like say, say Grace was a hand strip, um, we want it to lay flat. So anything you do with the lay of the coat is encouraging it to lay that way. Mm -hmm. Blow drying with the lay of the coat. Now we're gonna thoroughly rinse. Yes, yes Grace. This is a process that's gonna take a little while to thoroughly rinse. If we leave anything behind, it can be drying in the skin. And 
Not good for grace. You feel nice and clean. Now it's time for the good stuff, my favorite part. This is where the magic happens in the conditioning. So I have mixed up, um, this is kind of a little science project, but it, I'll, I'll get a shot of the products that we used. These are all Yves Saint Bernard products and they are... So you're saying Yves Saint Bernard. Isn't Yves San, S-A-N. I know it's weird. Oh, okay, I thought it was like Saint Bernard as in... That's what I God. thought. But, but, it's... but what a name, Yves San Bernard. What's that mean? I don't know. So we're... Uh, Oh, yeah, so <laughs> nice. But after about three or four minutes, it's crazy soft and just balanced. So we always want to take our time with the bathing, guys. I know a lot of people say, my dog doesn't like the bath. I don't like to put them through it, so I rush through the bath. Find a way to make your dog like the bath because it's so important. I'm massaging Grace. There's a reason for Grace to like the bath. Right? She loves the attention. She does. She's happy. We want to get that conditioner in the beard, and we're just going to rub it straight down there. We need it there. Believe it or not, conditioning, people are often told to go for degreasing shampoos, but degreasing shampoos are extremely drying. And what happens with extremely drying shampoos? We completely strip the oils out of their coat, completely. So we don't want to go for those degreasing shampoos. Conditioner dissolves grease. Grease dissolves grease. The conditioner is what cleans it after you've washed it. So I didn't know that until I started taking my pet esthetician course. And then I started experimenting with it and I was like, I can't believe it. I, I would have some dogs that had some pretty nasty paw pads. Let's talk about that for a minute because I've heard you talk about this pet esthetician course. Uh -huh. very That's a hard word to say. It took, I had to practice it. So, esthetician. so what exactly does it mean to be when you, when you earned your certification as a pet esthetician? What does that mean for you? That means that I have not only studied the science of the skin and coat of a canine but i also have been trained how to identify what coat type i'm dealing with that's the first thing that we need to know and we've already identified that grace is a medium coat so you identify the coat type and then my course has allowed me to learn the needs of each coat type short medium and long and, and, and then after understanding the needs of those coat types, my course is teaching me how to use their products, which I thought was a gimmick. I'm like, oh, you're teaching me this, so I use your products, and they're very expensive. But first of all, their products are unlike anything I've ever used in 20 years of pet grooming. And I'm not kidding. And I, I'm not trying to sell you on their products. I get nothing for that. Um, but the balancing effect that they do on the proper, the proper products on the proper skin and coat blew me away. I, I mean, I was then, I'm a believer. <laughs> yeah, I get it. And Grace has a little bit of yuck on her bum. Most dogs do. I'm going to make sure I get some conditioner back there and let that soak it off. So now the conditioner is all on Grace. Good baby. It's okay. So one of the things that I really appreciate about you, because I've been one of those people who watches every video you make. Oh, I appreciate that. You regularly recommend different shampoos and conditioners and so forth. And I know that that's coming from your expertise, both having been a groomer for many, many years, as well as the pet esthetician yes. course that you're going through now. And so it's honing your ability to understand which type of products to use when. Yeah. And so I appreciate learning from you about uh, the different types of products. As I showed you, I have a cabinet full of things that you recommended on your channel. And I'm starting to learn about when to use them in different situations. So when I might yeah. use them with a puppy versus when I might use them with... I have another dog that we'll be uh, doing today who has a very dry coat. And so I'll be eager oh, to... Oh, I can't wait to use this conditioner that we mixed up. It's fantastic. Add a little more back here. You know, 
so just listening to what you're saying, this music to my ears, but I also know that I've been on YouTube. I've been a pet groomer for 20 years. I've been on YouTube for four years teaching what I know. But I also want to say, as I'm going along and I look back at some of those other videos, I've, I have learned better ways since then. So, you know, I want to make that known that, let's take for instance today, we're working with a, a little schnauzer. My other schnauzer video on my channel is a good schnauzer video for pattern placement and everything, but there's a mistake in that, something that I don't do anymore. And that is reverse clip. And that is something that I've learned in my course, in the pet esthetician course. It never dawned on me. And then nobody had ever drilled it in my head. Dog's hair follicles can be damaged. And dog's hair follicle has a, what's called a pillar muscle. Like, so if you see certain breeds have the hair stand up on the back of their neck, that's a muscle that's connected to the follicle. And when that happens, that muscle is what's controlling that hair. Reverse clipping. Now, now she has a pillar muscle too. It's just that medium coats and long coats don't have as strong of, as a, I think it's called a pillar muscle, pilly muscle, I don't know. I'll put it up on screen. They don't have as strong of a muscle as a short hair breed does. And the short hair breeds have coarser hair typically, but it can be damaged during reverse clipping. That pillar muscle, pilly muscle, whatever the heck it's called, can be damaged. I never knew that. So oh, this- Oh, how I respect you for saying, I'm, I'm still learning. I am. I'm still learning and I'm sharing as I go. And that's part of what I love about your channel and YouTube in general is that we're all learning and we're sharing as we go. And this is such a beautiful platform for that, Amy. I so it appreciate is. you sharing your wisdom the way that you do with all of us. I want to do right by my audience and I want to do right by the dogs. You have such a big heart for the dogs and the people that you're working with and it's just so obvious all the time. Thank you. It's, it, is, it is wonderful to be able to help people that are looking for the answers that they can't find or looking for answers to things they, they didn't know and they didn't know they didn't know, you know? So I'm just going to share as much as I can obtain. Well, one of the things I so appreciate, <laughs> again, another thing I should say, I appreciate about your, your channel and what you're doing is that you are giving us your experience and you're not beholden to any one company or any one type of product. And so you really do research a variety of different products. I and do. You'll, Call it what it is when you need to. So thank you for doing that as well, Amy. I want to be unbranded. Meaning, hey, up until now, one of my favorite conditioners was uh, Nature's Specialty Sun Guard. And still is. It's a great conditioner. But after trying these Yves Saint Bernard products, I'm just like, I can't believe that there's any other products on the market. I believe that was 70 or $80. Oh, wow. It's really expensive. Okay, so it most people being... couldn't afford it or couldn't justify it. But I do want to say this you don't use a lot of them. And so you have to be sure that you're using the products properly, diluting them, or you're wasting product and wasting money. But that goes for all your products. Most all of them are dilutable. And I do gently brush a longer, the, the long, you know, the longer furnishings. I like to gently brush this conditioner through because it's actually the easiest time to brush it as long as it's not matted or tangled. But if it was, I could work on it. But I want to say that when a dog's skin is wet, it is soft. This is a slicker brush. And, you know, every now and then put it on yourself. I'm pushing pretty hard right now myself just to feel what that feels like. But remind yourself of how much pressure you're putting on her skin. It's okay to work it through with your slicker brush gently. I have a very loose hold on my brush. It's okay to distribute your, your great products, your great conditioners through your dog's coat with a, a slicker br brush gently. 
Remember that this skin is wet, it is very soft. So it could easily be damaged or irritated. So if you're not comfortable with that, then just don't do this step. I'm very comfortable with it. You will also get more um, dead hair when you're brushing the conditioner through gently. You'll notice that it's another good way to release. If you have a shedding breed, wow, will you get hair out when you're brushing them with the conditioner still in before you rinse the conditioner. And I'm kind of holding the hair and brushing it because I don't want to pull at her skin. Good. And now it's time to thoroughly rinse everything from the coat. Make sure the water's just lukewarm. Cover the nose. All right. Hold the ears down. Good, Grace. Good. Okay, honey. You have to rinse all your product. It's very important. Until the water runs clear, you can see there's still product coming off here. It's still kind of milky looking. When the water runs clear all the way through the dog, then your dog is thoroughly rinsed. She has a lot of furnishings underneath, so we want to be sure to thoroughly rinse all that. Okay, Grace feels really nice. Just squeeze all the water down off your dog. Kind of squeeze it down the legs. Squeeze your little beard. <laughs> squeeze that little beard. Such a good girl. A good girl. Yes, that's good, yes. How does she feel? Great. Doesn't she feel yeah. like her, her skin and coat is, is well balanced? Mm. Yeah, very clean and well balanced. Because we have properly shampooed and conditioned, we didn't skip the condition, we conditioned Grace, she will actually dry faster than if we had skipped the conditioning step. People are, are, are misunderstood about that, that it balances the skin and coat so it dries quickly because it's a well-balanced picture. It's like when your skin is dry and, and you put lotion on it, it, it now is balanced. Now, Sean, do you ever, do you ever brush your dogs at, right after you've washed them, conditioned them and toweled them off? I typically have not until I started watching your channel. Did you try it? Yeah, have you tried? Did I, you notice a difference? Yeah, I think that it works very well. It does help with the, the drying, I think too. Yeah. That's what I think too. And it, it also helps if there was just uh, the, the slightest bit of, little bit of dead coat still left in there or a little bit of potential tangles. It just smooths it all out for when we do dryer. It's just with like- With this beautiful conditioner, it is just coming, it, I, I can yeah. feel it, just everything loosens. Yes, it does. That's why I can't wait to show you. We'll run a comb through her after she's dried before we trim her and say, what a difference. It's great, it's good stuff. And I know you recommend that every three weeks they get a bath. So in essence, the way we're setting it up here with all of our dogs is that every three weeks they get a bath and then the, the next three weeks they get a groom. So these dates that you're setting are going to help us create that schedule. Going good, forward. that's absolutely perfect. A dog's skin keratization cycle is every 21 days. So we're exfoliating through the bathing process and we're, the brand new skin is under there coming up strong and healthy and we're getting rid of the dry flaky skin by bathing them every 21 days. And we're also taking care of the coat, you know, helping to balance out their natural oils. It's very important. And it's something tremendous that you can do for your pet is to keep them on, you know, the daily brushing schedule and the three-week um, bathing schedule, as well as a six-week grooming s session. You will see results in your dog's overall health. I mean, as far as do they ever get skin allergies? Probably not. It's amazing what it does for them by just caring for it properly.
and as often as it needs it. This feels so nice. I was going to say, here, run a comb. Now, this is the fine teeth of a comb. Look it's a that. very fine comb. It's super fine teeth. Yeah, Grace. It goes just right through so beautifully. It just feels like silk, and it feels so balanced all the way through. She's perfectly prepped. She's had a break. She went potty, and she took a little nap, a few minutes, to the good girl. I can get a comb completely through my dog, and I'm using the fine edge of the comb, so it's, it, it's telling me she's perfect, she's prepped.